Well, I am going to talk about uh, implementation research, a relatively new field for, for the last 10, 15 years. And I'm going to use India Hypertension Control Initiative, the project that ICMR and Ministry has been running for the last four or five years, as a case study to emphasize important principles of uh, implementation research. Well, uh, let me first talk about the need for implementation research. Uh, there are many interventions with proven efficacy in a controlled setting. Uh, Dr. Ganga Khedkar talked about ART for, t for HIV. It's a known uh, intervention with very good efficacy. But not all, not all interventions with proven efficacy are effective in real world setting. And I want to give an example of uh, artemisinin-based uh, combination therapy for malaria. The clinical trials conducted showed that ACT has an efficacy of about 98% for uncomplicated malaria. Very highly efficacious, right? So when this uh, ACT was introduced in, in Tanzania, a highly malaria endemic country, what they found was only about 40% of uh, malaria patients effectively benefited because of, uh, because of uh, ACT. So only 37% was the effectiveness. So this is a gap, a research, uh, this is a gap between the research and a practice. So then the researchers conducted se several studies to identify why, this is a, why, why there's a gap. And they identified several reasons. The first reason was access of the patients. There are several patients who were residing in far off areas. They were not able to reach health facilities in time. They couldn't afford the transportation. So that was one major reason why this uh, strategy failed. Second was stock out of rapid diagnostic tests. You all know that uh, the RDTs are necessary to diagnose malaria, and only then ACT will be initiated. So there was stockouts in several facilities, so that was another bottleneck. The third was the healthcare providers, they did not adhere to the treatment guidelines, and that, that resulted into, uh, again, reduction in, in the effectiveness. And fourth important reason that they identified was the, the prescriptions did not were not communicated very clearly to the patients or caregivers. And therefore, the adherence to uh, treatment further reduced. So these, these were the implementation gaps or barriers that they identified. And implementation research basically addresses uh, these challenges. Uh, it tries to reduce the gap between research and practice. So this is a standard definition of implementation research. It is a scientific inquiry into questions concerning implementation of intervention. And by intervention, I mean any of the seven Ps. It could be a program, it could be practice, principle, procedure, product, fields, or policies. And implementation research is a study of methods and strategies that enable research uptake into policy and practice. So these are the, some of the questions which can be addressed through implementation research. For example, what intervention is best for the new context. In, in the malaria example which I gave, when, if the access is an issue, uh, if, pa if patients are not going to, uh, uh, the, the access is main issue for them, what could be the best intervention for them? What is the best way to implement the intervention? How the target population be reached? What factors might affect the implementation and its adopt adoption? How can the cost be uh, reduced? And how can the uptake of the implementation, uh, uptake and health outcomes be improved? So these are some of the questions which can be addressed through implementation research. And these are important outcomes of uh, your implementation research. That includes acceptability of the intervention by intervention stakeholders, adoption into the program, the feasibility of introducing that intervention, the sustainability of the intervention, the fidelity of the intervention, the cost, as well as coverage. So this slide 
basically describes the, the position of uh, implementation research in the research pipeline. And the green uh, lines indicate the places of uh, implementation research. So the first question the implementation researcher need to ask is, is there any evidence about efficacy of that intervention? And if there is no evidence no, that the intervention is efficacious in a controlled setting, the recommended research is uh, efficacy research, you may conduct clinical trial in a controlled setting. On the other hand, if uh, the intervention is efficacious, the next question the, uh, the implementation, re implementation researcher need to ask is, is there any evidence about effectiveness of the intervention, whether the in uh, intervention can work in a real world setting. And if there is no evidence towards that, the recommended research is effectiveness research. On the other hand, if the intervention is effective, is efficacious as well as effective, in such settings, one could consider implementation research. So there are three important phases of implementation research. In the first phase, uh, we identify the key bottlenecks, key gaps in implementation. Uh, understand the contextual factor affecting uh, the intervention. And in, again, the malaria example, the key gaps that were identified, like the access, like the availability of RDTs and so on, could be the issues. <clears throat> and these could be addressed, or these could be identified by variety of study designs, like a cross-sectional study, or a qualitative study, or sometimes one could also use a mixed method studies. The second phase of implementation research is to develop implementation strategies which, which are informed by the findings of your first phase and, and test these implementation strategies using several designs. Uh, and mostly uh, in such setting, we use uh, uh, quasi-experimental study designs. And, and we see different outcomes that we have seen uh, in, in the previous slide. And the third phase of implementation research is to disseminate the findings of your implementation research, uh, make a communication, communication plan, and, and see how your findings are ultimately incorporated in the program. So let me give an example of uh, India Hypertension Control Initiative, uh, a, a mission mode project that we have been running. Now, we all know hypertension is one of the important leading risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And the National NCD step survey that was conducted in the country in 2017 and 18 indicated that about one in four adults in India have hypertension. Uh, it was also found in the survey that among those who are hypertensive, less than 30% of the pop, uh, hypertensives are aware about their hypertension status. About 15% or even less than that were on treatment. And the hypertension control was very low. Less than 10% of the hypertensives had their hypertension under control. So, so what were the key bottlenecks for hypertension treatment in uh, public health facilities in the, in the national program? So we identified four key bottlenecks uh, in, uh, for this. One was there was no uniform treatment algorithm. That every, every doctor used to, uh, used to have his own algorithm for managing hypertension. Availability of antihypertensives was another major issue. Again, the hypertension was primarily managed by physicians at district hospitals or CHCs, and there was limited treatment in subcenters or in PHCs. And the last important bottleneck that we identified was the information system with the national NCD program, NPCDCS, didn't have uh, a capacity to measure the hypertension control rates. So based on these uh, bottlenecks, we designed uh, this, this project. This was a collaborative uh, project between ICMR, Ministry of Health, uh, WHO, state governments. And the primary objective of this project was to strengthen hypertension treatment component in the program. So we, we designed or developed five key strategies to uh, address these bottlenecks. First was we developed a standard treatment algorithm protocol for managing hypertension. Second was we ensured uninterrupted supply of medications and very importantly, blood pressure monitors. 
The third was team-based care and task shifting, uh, task sharing. Fourth was patient-centric care, providing uh, care to at the doorstep of, of the patients. And fifth was developing information system. So this was a treat simple treatment uh, protocol that, that was developed. And what we also ensured a consensus of, a consensus of all state experts as well as program managers to use this protocol in, in the hypertension, uh, uh, in the national program, in, in their uh, district or state programs. This protocol was based on evidence-based uh, uh, practices. It was drug and dose specific. It reduced uh, clinical variability and also resulted in more efficient and cost-effective selection of medications and treatment approaches. The second uh, bottleneck was uh, supply, uh, drug supply chain. And we strengthened this drug su supply chain by following five steps. First is the, the protocol drugs, the three, pro uh, three drugs which were in the protocol. They were included in the state uh, essential drug list. We developed simple Excel-based uh, tools to make forecasting about drug requirement at the facility level as well as at the, at the district level. Uh, adequate budget was allocated for purchase of these uh, uh, drugs. And eventually, we, uh, we ensured availability of at least 90 days drug at the facility level. And this drug uh, supply chain was monitored using two simple indicators. One was at the district level, the indicator was availability of drug. Uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, patient, number of patient days. And second was uh, proportion of facilities with inadequate stocks. Th this were routinely monitored. The third strategy, this, this, you can see here in these two uh, graphs, the procurement of drug uh, across IH, IHCR sites increased over, over the years. And the ne next graph shows antihypertensive drug availability uh, in, in different uh, states. The third was uh, team-based care, and here we trained all, all uh, health, uh, health staff, including medical officers, staff nurses, pharmacists. And by, by training or by involving all uh, staff workers, you can see uh, the retention of uh, patients in, in care increased, uh, as seen by the follow-up visit. 65% of the patients uh, were uh, followed up uh, successfully. The th fourth component was uh, patient-centric primary care. And this was achieved by involving health, uh, health and wellness centers uh, uh, in, in I, uh, for, for uh, IHCI. And you can see the left, left hand side graph where number of IH, uh, IHCIs implementing, uh, number of uh, healthcare, health and wellness center implementing IHCI protocol. What was also very important was uh, the patients who were taking treatment for, from uh, subcenters, the control rates were very high, about 65%, as against district hospital. And the last strategy was uh, monitoring the, this uh, information in real-time manner. And for that, we developed a, a simple app. It was, and it is called a simple app. Uh, the key features of this app were it was the speed. It, it took only 70 seconds uh, for registering a new patient and about 13 seconds to register a, a follow-up visit. It was real-time in, uh, in nature, no paperwork. It, it allowed us to uh, do a cohort monitoring of patients, uh, and it was monitored, and two, two important indicators were hypertension control as well as retention in care. Another feature, important feature of this app was preparing overdue list. So if a patient doesn't come uh, a particular month, overdue list is prepared and it is, is uh, sent to the respective health worker. And the last and very important feature was uh, transfer, uh, transfer of patients to the, to the nearest health facility. If a, if a patient has registered in a district hospital, he can be uh, transferred to a health, care, health and wellness center for subsequent treatment in just one minute. And, and you can see the, the first graph where overall 45% was the control rate that was achieved uh, in, after four year, five years. So this is the status of IHCI uh, currently. It is now implemented in 23 states, in 132 districts, and 35 lakh hypertension patients are under follow-up. And very recently, on 21st of September, uh, this project received a uh, UN award uh, for, for as a best practice. And very importantly, the third phase of uh, implementation research, the, all lessons that were learned in IHCI 
are being incorporated in the national pro uh, program for NCBs. Thank you very much.